and uh, Isabella will also present uh, a book that she curated, which is entitled Artwork. It's a collectanea of essays about conservation and restoration of contemporary art. It's a book that was originally published by Marsilio Editore in Italian, had a great success, and also thanks to the many feedbacks we had, we translated it into English, and Isabella will present it in the next few days, because Homo Faber will have every day a rich program of conferences, debates, presentations, and concerts to uh, make it come alive in the Square of Conference Hall. When you will get into the room curated by Stefano Michelli called Workshop Excuse, I'm sure you will wonder how we could fit in that room two helicopters, two Ferrari, four motorbikes, and an endless number of bicycles. This is a little trick that we will not wiggle now, but maybe Professor Michelli can anticipate us why he chose uh, uh, those pieces and what is the role of craftsmanship today in a scenario, in a new scenario of production, which of course goes towards artificial intelligence but nevertheless requires the talent and the presence of the human being. Well, it's true. It was complicated to bring a couple of Ferraris in that, in that room and uh, we will spend a few hours, if you have some time tomorrow morning, discussing the details of the logistics. Uh, let me go to the point. I, I, I think the question is right to the point. Why we decided to focus on uh, a, a sector, on an industry which is well known for industrialization rather than craftsmanship? If we think about cars, about car manufacturing, well, we immediately think about homogenization, about the fact that uh, Henry Ford, a century ago, was able to reinvent uh, production, a way of producing things, and uh, well, craftsmanship got exposed by by these new technologies, by these new ways of production. Well, it was a way, this pavilion, it was a way to collect objects that do tell us another story, that do tell us the role of craftsmen uh, involved in a number of uh, products. Obviously, we chose uh, some emblematic ones. We have uh, a very classic 1962 Ferrari, a 250 Le Mans, which has been restored by this amazing craftsman which works in Reggio Emilia, an amazing object. But we also chose some racing, you know, a racing object, which is an example of how to achieve the best standards, the best performances, you need an active role of a great variety of contributors, which are craftsmanships, which are obviously tied with the, the tradition, with the traditional craft, but also do explore the frontier of technological evolution. And you will be fascinated in analyzing, taking care of details with our, which are the result of this you know, concert. You will also see bicycles, you know, mobility is evolving. Um, the generation of my two sons is not very excited about cars. We decided to showcase bicycles that represent the future of mobility. Some cases we, we will use bike sharing, some cases we will buy special bikes that are made to measure for our needs. And you will see in, in, in the pavilion what we are able to do with our craftsmen from London, from Italy, from Monte Carlo. Also, there is a, an 80, 80 square meters laboratory from Monte Carlo where there are, there are technologies that allow the production of three bicycles every day. And you will be astonished by the beauty of this hybrid object that, that has been presented. You will see also an helicopter. Uh, we wanted to explore the frontier, the frontier of technology an helicopter which is made to measure, which is made according to your needs, your requirements, which is man-made explicitly, and you will have the opportunity to meet this very brilliant engineer who has been passionate about helicopters for 10 years and is now able to sell these incredible objects all over the world. You will see also motor bicycles, you will see Vespas, but you know, I don't want to anticipate even more. And you will be astonished by the quality and the intensity and the passion of those people who are exploring these different frontiers. And you know, you will be probably amazed by the fact that in such a standardized, homogenized industry, well, the role of Homo Faber is crucial. See you tomorrow.
Thank you, thank you, Stefano. In the workshop exclusive rooms too, so there will be artisans at work, always they are ready to meet you. Susanna Pozzoli is uh, one of the most uh, uh, delicate artists using photography. Um, she delivered a fabulous uh, work when she went to Korea to meet some of the most important master craftsmen there. And we invited her to express her own vision of the, the most uh, relevant and significant uh, media dar, artistic craft professions of Venice and of the Veneto region. We did not want to celebrate the territories with a selection of objects. We did not want to celebrate this incredibly rich territory by just telling stories that have already been told so many other times. We thought we needed a new perspective and a new point of view. We wanted to express the reality of all these ateliers and of all these gestures, but needing a poetic point of view. Uh, there is a lot of difference uh, between the reading a text in prose and the reading a poem. Watching Susanna's photographs will be like reading a fabulous poem where every image is like a, a word composing a poem that everybody can then read in their mind. Susanna, how has been the encounter with this 21 atelier, so diverse from one another, and what did you learn in, in these six months, basically, that it took you to photograph them? Uh, thank you for this introduction, it's amazing. <laughs> I had a great chance to work on uh, very different masters and uh, knowledge that uh, sometimes I knew a little bit or not at all. And I took a lot of time to, first of all, learn uh, what I was going to photograph and then meet uh, the masters and then eventually taking the picture. So it's a very, very slow uh, process and it's a real relationship that I um, kind of built with them. So the picture are uh, like a way to try to express their um, uh, the time, the passion and the involvement that they every day have to put in their work without showing them. So it's um, still lives, uh, but uh, it's uh, a lot about the passion and, and the materials and the time. So um, the ideal uh, view of the exhibition that uh, you will find tomorrow is just wondering. So there is no order, there is no fixed uh, way to experience it. And uh, at the end, you should be eventually overwhelmed by uh, the beauty, uh, the difference of uh, uh, all kind of tools, for example, and uh, materials. And um, these scenarios in the interiors, they are very, very enriching. For sure, what I learned uh, is the importance of uh, dedication and time. Uh, there is a special relation to time. Uh, those people are not uh, connected to the internet all the time. They are not distracted. There is no distraction. They work so hard for so many hours. And I really wanted my picture to tell this story, to be like a, a proof of this uh, engagement. And uh, between these 21 ateliers, you might be surprised because the choice that we made is as diverse as the reality is. So you have very small workshops, like the one of Mr. Barbon, who is a um, wood uh, uh, carver, still having his small workshop not far from the Frari Basilica in Venice. But you also have bigger companies that produce maybe textiles, very precious textiles, where the persons working there, who are they? For the Italian law, they are just workers. But we know that they're not. We know that they are artisans who every day give their best to deliver something more than what is just expected. And you will find all of this in Susanna's images. India Madavi um, will take us into a very oneric uh, scenario composed of two beautiful structures where you will really acknowledge and recognize all that artisans can do for designers and interior decorations. India, you put a lot of yourself uh, in the conception of these two imaginary architecture. They are imaginary, but they're also real. So what is the role of craftsmanship into making an idea, a project, a dream coming real for an interior designer? Um, yeah, these are tales of my imagination, these two pavilions that I actually designed and uh, what was interesting to me is how you can um, use craftsmanship to serve an imaginary to serve um, yeah your imagination
imagination. Um, so we created two different two pavilions that are very different in shape, in colors, in textures, and actually um, it's in, it's a different scale from the whole exhibition. Um, and, and it's supposed to give you some kind of space and emotion to dream, to think of things in a different way. It's only about that, really. It's taking you somewhere else. Um, and, I, and I think uh, you'll see tomorrow, this comes totally at the end of the whole um, cheminement, <clears throat> because it's on number 16, so it's really before the end, it's the last room re in reality. And, I think you're, you'll be able to sit and enjoy and, and, and dream um, if you wish. India has chosen very special craftsmen to work with her. So you will see this incredible structure in Alatan. Yes, yes the, one, one, one is called, um, is a tribute to Jean-Jacques Rousseau called, uh, what is it called? It's called um, Jean-Jacques Rousseau Forever. And uh, it's made out of rattan and um, uh, made in Spain and with a, a, a famous uh, a rattan specialist. And I used also the, um, uh, the, the mosaic from the school here, um, from the Scuola, the mosaic, uh, uh, an hour away from Venice. And then the second room is, is called, it's like a merry-go-round. We don't really know, it's all round. It's, it's, could be underwater, above water, and completely circular, made out of upholstery and fabrics. I, I think that's, is that? Yeah, and, and the passion that all the artisans put will be visible tomorrow. All the mosaic makers in Spilibergo, just for the uh, love of working for India and for this project, they gave up their summer holidays, and you know how we as Italians, we love our summer holidays in August, but they give them up to work, to work for it's India. True. It's true, it's about 20 students exactly. uh, for one month. For one month. They exactly. did this amazing floor, and um, actually it's a, a very contemporary floor made out of mosaic, and it's really fantastic. I would like to thank them here. You'll, you'll see tomorrow. Oh, Faber is also very much about youth, about young generations, and we'll also see why. So if I could have another microphone, because here I would like to, to have both Stefano Boeri and Jean Blanchard describing together this room which we called Best of Europe. I, uh, if I may, uh, all the persons that get into the room after taking out the curtain, they have a reaction that is like, <gasps> They really are, uh, their, their breath is taken away. Jean Blanchard, the Italo-Belgian curator, has traveled Europe for more than one year to scout for all these artisans, for their pieces to be there. Stefano Boeri, uh, he gave us his full availability to create a setup that could make all these fabulous objects emerge. How did you work together? And uh, do you think you have achieved the, the results that you had in mind. Who starts first, Jean? Well, you will tell us tomorrow if we achieve this result. We cannot judge ourselves, but I think that Stefano, Stefano Boeri, uh, put himself in a very interesting position. You know when architects want to show their work. Instead, Stefano acted, it disappeared in a way. You cannot see his work, but he created a space that it is already called River Europe, because in a period when Europe is fighting, in Brussels, they're all fighting one against the other. We see in this room a united Europe of the materials and of the countries. I went around and I tried to find pieces that were, that were made 
only by the same, the persons had to make the peace from A to Z alone, without the help of, of other people. And I didn't want to forget less known countries, like, for example, Albania, Cyprus, Latvia, all sorts of countries. In some of my trips, I was accompanied by Jacques Ray, who is here, and uh, who created. Meanwhile, I was searching for the craftsmen, relations, so that Geneva will be, in a near future, the center of craft in Europe. To explain you what we uh, exhibited before giving the word to Stefano, I ask Alain to hold my microphone, please, for a second. accept any piece that it is just a mere reproduction of the past. And uh, Stefano, and now I will give you the, the word, interpreted, as I told you, magnificently this um, Europe River. Thanks. A few words. That I know Jean since a long time, and um, although it's a force to get closer to Karl Marx. He's a very spiritual person. <laughs> and for this reason, what we have done with George Donat, Jacopo Abate, and Martina Mitrovic was to try to interpret its uh, curiosity. And while we were, we had to deal with uh, uh, hundreds of objects of different size, of different material with different function. And so knowing jean Karl attitude to walk uh, on the edge between, uh, it is true, art and craft, I would love to add uh, furniture, because that's a third field. We have immediately thought to realize, uh, well, a river, and there is a river, it's a wooden river, which is, I think, uh, the best way to absorb the variety, the complexity, and the um, crazy differentiation object that we are in the room. So, I really like the idea that this could become a metaphor of what Europe could and should be. Thanks. Among these, uh, in, in this room, on top of the incredible objects selected by Jean and beautifully displayed on Stefano's table, you will always meet six artisans per day. Every four days, we will have a, a new uh, set of uh, six artisans always at work, once again coming from all over Europe and representing a variety of crafts. And we have to give thanks to the French Institut National des Métiers d'Art because they helped us selecting the French artisans who will be working in our room. But could we talk about the French Métiers d'Art without mentioning the Fondation Betancourt-Chouelaire? 
this uh, private uh, institution has been working for almost 20 years for the prestige and the sustain of the finest French craftsmen. And when we invited this institution to join forces with us for the Homo Fabian event, we found in them a very sensitive and a very um, special partner. Because of course, on, we, we couldn't do it by ourselves. So on top of the Michelangelo Foundation, I would like to give thanks to the Fondation Betancourt Scholaire, to the Fondation Giorgio Cini, to the Triennale Design Museum, and to the Fondation Coloni. Alain Lardé um, has been chosen to narrate a story which is super long, extremely prestigious, not so easy to concentrate. Uh, how did you choose the uh, objects that we can find and how did Rami Fischler help you developing this beautiful, super elegant concept that you will see tomorrow? May I speak in French, please? You know that my English of course. is so poor. No, no. I am so tired. Speak French and, and I will try to translate. You me as usual. C'était une opportunité pour moi, pour la Fondation Bétancourt d'abord, mais pour moi, de rendre un hommage à la fois aux artisans d'art français et de rendre hommage aussi à cette fondation euh, dont j'ai la chance d'être proche depuis une quinzaine d'années. The room that you will visit tomorrow is not only an homage to the French master craftsmen and their objects that have been selected, but to the Fondation Betancourt Scholaire itself, uh, with which Alain has been working for over 15 years. J'étais pour la première fois dans un jury de la Fondation Betancourt en 2003. Et j'étais là avec un ami euh, que d'aucuns d'entre vous euh, connaissent, qui était Jean-Louis Dumas. Et, et avec lui, nous avons imaginé pour ce prix des développements euh, qui, sont, qui sont venus euh, plus tard. Et j'étais particulièrement heureux, notamment, comme nous l'avons souhaité Jean-Louis et moi, qui malheureusement nous a quittés trop tôt, de, faire, de profiter de l'action extraordinaire de la Fondation bétancourt Schweller auprès des, métiers, des artisans d'art pour les inciter à dialoguer plus souvent avec des talents extérieurs, avec des artistes et avec des designers. Together with uh, Jean-Louis uh, Dumas Alain, imagined already in 2003 some possible developments for the French métier d'art. And uh, he's happy now to acknowledge that this intuition has led to very fruitful results, and in particular in helping French, the top French artisans selected by the Betancourt Foundation to uh, set themselves in dialogue, more and more in dialogue, with the contemporary creation of the design. Uh, 